In this third video, we're going to talk about negating statements. But to begin with, we're going to start with implications. So if A and B are propositions, then as we've seen before, this symbol here, this arrow, means that A implies B. And what that tells us is if A is true, then B must also be true. We're going to look at truth tables. So the truth table of A implies B is as follows. So if A is a true statement and B is a true statement, then it's true that A implies B. If A is true and B is false, then it's false that A implies B. A true thing cannot imply a false thing. If A is false, however, it can imply a true thing. And if A is false, it can also imply a false thing. So you get true and true in these columns. We're going to put this alongside the truth table column for the negation of A or B. So if we have A is true, then the negation of A is false, and B is true, then the negation of A or B is false or true, which is true. If A is true, then the negation of A is false. Then if B is false, the negation of A or B is false or false, which is false. And working through the same steps with these two columns, you get true and true. And as we can see, the truth values of A implies B are identical to those of the negation of A or B. What this means is that this proposition, A implies B, and this proposition, negation of A or B, are logically equivalent. So whenever we see this A implies B, we can replace it with this negation of A or B, and the logic remains the same. In other words, these two propositions are just a different way of writing each other. This might be a bit abstract and hard to uh, come to grips with why this is equivalent to this um, intuitively. So A implies B can be restated as, well, either A is false, or if A is true, then B must also be true. And this makes sense. Now we're going to learn how to methodically negate statements. Any proposition can be broken down into smaller propositions, smaller components, and we can apply these basic rules and join them together to negate any proposition. Uh, negating is important in many proofs. Um, if you remember from the first video, techniques such as contradiction or contrapositivity, you'll need negations, and so it's important to know how to negate statements properly. If A and B are propositions, then as we've just seen, a implies B is another way of saying the negation of A or B. The first negation rule is that the negation of a negation of a proposition A is just that proposition A itself. Thinking of this in terms of truth values, if A is true, then the negation of A is false, then the negation of that is again true. And likewise, the negation of false is true, the negation of that is just false. So whatever A is true or false, the truth value is of the negation of the negation is just the same. The second rule we have here and the third rule are actually forms of De Morgan's laws. If you remember this from the elementary set theory or probability theory, De Morgan's laws come into play quite a lot over the course of mathematics. So the negation of the statement A or B is equal to the negation of A and the negation of B. And likewise, the negation of the statement A and B is equal to the negation of A or the negation of B. So using this identity here, A implies B is an abbreviation of the negation of A or B. Well, the negation of the statement A implies B using one of these uh, De Morgan's laws here can actually be proved to be A and the negation of B. Finally, we have the negation of for all x, a of x holds, is there exists x for which a of x doesn't hold. And this will look familiar. If I'm trying to disprove for all x, a of x holds, I need to find a counterexample. And that example is the x for which the negation of a holds. And also, the negation of there exists x for which a of x holds is for all x, a of x doesn't hold. I've left it as an exercise for you to verify the first four negations on the list. So this one, this one, this one, and this one by making truth tables as we saw in the previous slide. 
that's a quick demonstration of how these negation rules work together. We're going to have a go at negating this proposition. So if A, B, C, and D are propositions, then we have the proposition for all X, A and B or C holds implies that the negation of D of X holds. Well, negating this statement, so putting brackets around it and writing the little negation symbol at the start, because the first thing it says is for all X, some big proposition holds, that's like saying there exists X for which this big proposition doesn't hold. That was the last negation rule on the previous slide. So there exists X for which the negation of A and B or C implies the negation of D of X holds. Well, the next rule we're gonna do is the negation rule for implications. So this is like saying there exists X for which A and B or C and the negation of the negation of D of X holds. Well, the negation of the negation of D of X is D of X itself. So there exists X for which A and B or C and D of X holds. And we can rearrange this uh, as we like in this order. Finally, we leave you with three exercises. Now, in these exercises, the abstract propositions A, B, C, and D have been replaced with more concrete ones that you'll have to negate. Don't worry about the actual truth of these statements. Uh, we're just talking about negating them. We're not worried about whether these statements are true or false on the face of it. So the first thing you have to negate is the phrase for all x in R, so for all real x, x squared is non-negative. The second statement to negate is for all epsilon bigger than zero, there exists delta bigger than zero, such that if x minus a has modulus between zero and delta, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon in modulus. Don't worry about the fact that a lot of this stuff hasn't been defined. It's a proposition where all of these are kind of free variables, if you like. Finally, we have one last statement, and it's about integers this time. So the statement is, for all natural numbers, there exists some integer. So for all natural n, there exists an integer k, such that if n plus k is equal to 12, or if the modulus of k is prime, then n squared is congruent to 1 mod 8, which means that the remainder on division by 8 of n squared is equal to 1. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video.